Today I want to talk about the two best players coming up in the NHL entry draft. I want to talk about Jack Hughes and Capo Caco. These are absolutely special hockey players that have their own very unique set of skills. I want to do my best here to avoid hampered cliches like they're generational as I think that's being thrown around a lot and really doesn't mean very much. So I say we start out with an individual scouting report on each guy, maybe give them a little bit of a comparison at the end. Basketball, the one-timer scores! You know it's coming and you still can't stop it. Let's start with Capo Caco, who is already an incredibly well-rounded and developed prospect. The perfect place to always begin with any player is skating, and for a larger player, at around 6'2", 190 pounds, Kako is an exceptional skater. Fluid on his edges and with phenomenal cutting ability, he uses his strength on his skates to keep separation and stability with defenders in the area. At the NHL level, I don't see him winning quick foot races with any of the more talented skaters. This shouldn't be too much of an issue though considering his game won't hinge on open ice play. Kako is a talented puck handler who uses his ability for practical moves instead of for flash. He keeps the puck to his outside step most of the time, making it nearly impossible to dislodge it when you consider that long reach he has. It's also exceptionally hard to even jar the puck loose as he possesses very soft hands keeping the puck in lockstep with him as he lumbers down the half boards. His shooting is a strong suit as well, he boasts an incredibly accurate one-timer which is a remarkably effective weapon as you can never have enough lethal shooting from the top of the circles on a power play. His shot does tend to lack explosiveness that I'd like to see from such a big body. This could come in time but I prefer his accuracy to a booming shot so he shouldn't sacrifice a lethally precise shot for any extra power. His release could use some work as I find it borders on the slow side a lot of the time but his decision making corrects for that shortcoming most often. His playmaking vision and IQ are exceptionally high for a player of that age, but when you play with full grown men for multiple seasons, you're forced to mature quickly. Kako is wonderful at seeing backdoor cutters and streaking players. He's also adept at making a pass than finding soft spots to get back for his own scoring chance. All this stems from a well developed hockey IQ. These abilities should transfer perfectly to the NHL. <laughs> With Capo Caco, you're getting a big, strong, versatile player who can be as lethal with his shot as he is with his vision. There isn't much more you can ask for other than blistering speed, but I doubt any NHL team will hold that against him on draft night. Let's talk about Jack Hughes now. As usual, we're going to start with skating and was it ever a treat to watch this guy get around the ice surface during my film study on him. He glides off his edges and dives powerfully into his cuts with the precision and fluidity of a talented dancer. He engages his hips for twist power maybe better than any prospect I've seen recently. His arsenal includes staggering afterburners. This is all to go with what I consider the most valuable skill in hockey, exceptional and blinding foot speed. He can change directions at will taking off whenever he feels like it, however he feels like it. He may be the best skating prospect I've seen from a well-rounded perspective. Hughes is a phenomenal puck handler who bridges an interesting gap between mostly set moves and rapid improvisation. He seems to be able to change them at will as he maneuvers around the ice with the puck glued to his stick. The even more impressive thing is that he manages to do it while maintaining great speeds. Unfortunately, he does tend to let his head drift down to the puck and away from the open ice from time to time which could be costly at the professional level. On top of that, he can get far too move crazy and become a turnover machine at times. These are easily corrected issues with time and effort though. Jack's shooting is an interesting mix of things I really like and things that scare the life out of me. He has a pretty accurate shot but with very little power on it most of the time. He picks great spots to shoot from but his backswing is far too long to get that off when any clever defenders are near. I think he has the ability to be a better shooter with NHL practice but he will be a 5-15 to 15 foot shooter for most of his career. Don't expect him to head down the wing and rifle anything past professional caliber goaltenders. 
His IQ is exceptionally high, but his playmaking ability is a tad underdeveloped to where I think it could be. Don't get me wrong, he's already a very good passer, but I think he has a higher ceiling to hit when he can't just outskate everyone on the ice in the pros. However, I do see flashes of unbelievable passing here and there. I think with NHL tier skill around him, he will flourish as an outstanding passer and not just the very competent one he is now. As I watch him move around the ice, it's clear that he has next level reaction and recognition ability. He already sees plays develop and defenders move better than a lot of professional players. This comes from that really high IQ I mentioned earlier. The only really massive knock on Hughes game at this point is his size, which I think is becoming less and less of an issue in the modern day NHL. That being said, I would really prefer to see him put on some weight in the summer, but I doubt his slight frame will off-put any teams on draft night. Happen again. Jack Hughes looks like his brother. Score! All in all, Jack Hughes is an unbelievable hockey prospect and very worthy of the hype surrounding him. Precise stick handling and borderline magical speed will be welcomed by whomever takes him on draft night. Let's do a really quick comparison and not worry about it too much because at the end of the day, a player's real NHL impact is impossible to determine for a number of factors, including the situation they're dropped into, how they adapt to the game, and how hard they're willing to work once they get to the show. On draft day though, for my money, I would go with Hughes as I believe size is becoming less and less important while pure speed and talent is the hot commodity. That being said, it is entirely possible though that Kako translates better to the NHL game with his skill set of power precision, playmaking, and size. I also think a lot of this comes down to how they fit. Do the Devils need more speed or would they prefer more size? Either way, any team would be ecstatic to get one of these incredible players come draft night. What a play by Hughes. Work by one man. Work by two men. Work by another guy. Top shelf, pop the water bottle. What do you guys think though? Who would you take first? Hughes, Kako, they got speed, skill, power. These guys have a lot of really impressive weapons. Let me know down in the comments. Let me know. I want to hear from you guys. I've been getting comments and likes and DMs and everything. I will respond to everything I see. So please have a discussion down there. Make sure to like, share, comment, subscribe. And we hit 200, which is just right around the corner. I'm giving away the TJ Oshie and a few other cards. And I, you know what? I'm going to give away the Rasmus Dalina at 200. You guys can have the Rasmus Dalina rookie card. Okay, and at 500, I'm giving away three different Pedersons, a Young Guns, a Rookie, and an Artifact. So make sure to keep it coming, guys, and I will see you guys at the next video.